Sentence number two. Um, oh, it's so com- confusing. It uses such formal words for no reason. What things would you say are important to our schools, enhancing welcome in the recently increasing international students? Oh god, that one got progressively worse. Man, Japanese entrance exams are so hard. <laughs> I do not pit- I do not envy you at all. Um, parts of the hotel where other guests find it inconvenient. What? Hello and welcome back to the only series on YouTube where a fully qualified English teacher fails at answering Japanese university entrance exams. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Kindai University Part 2. Okay, question number 16, sentence 1. In case one is interested in a token gift, make sure to fill in the contact information below, or leave empty and move on to the next page. Sentence number two. Input the contact information in the blank, if only you want to put your name down for gift vouchers, and if not, keep it as it, keep it, as it is and go on to the next page. So one made sense, um, a little bit weird, the grammar was a bit strange, two, very difficult to understand. And again, they're all trying to say the same thing here. I'll get onto that in a second. Sentence number three. If you would like to enter for a chance to win a gift certificate, please enter your contact information below. Otherwise, leave it blank and proceed to the next page. Perfect. Perfect English, clear, concise, easy to understand. Question number four. Only for those who wish to apply for a gift card should fill out the contact information. And those who wish not to should just go to the next page as to keep it blank, so as to keep it blank below. It was so good until the last little bit. (laughs) That one, again, was really good up until the end and it kind of made it difficult to understand. So the answer here is three. That's the one that makes most sense. And it's talking about, it's saying, if you want to apply for the chance to win this gift, fill in the information. If not, turn over to the next page. Like you're filling out a form. That's what it's saying. Um... Trying to think how to make the other sentences make sense. So the first one makes sense, um, but it's a bit more complex than number three. Sentence number two, um, oh, it's so confusing. It uses such formal words for no reason. Like input, you associate with kind of computers, not written forms. Although it doesn't say that it's not written, actually. Input your contact information in the blank space. You need to add, you know, the blank what. You can't just say in the blank. Uh, If you want to, only if you want to put your name down for a gift voucher. Full stop. If not, leave it blank and go on to the next page. I think, yeah, that makes sense. That took a bit of working through in my head. Uh, Number four, only those who wish to apply for a gift card should fill out the contact information and those who wish not to should just... So everything's fine up until... And those who wish not to, please turn over. That's all it needs to say. Please turn over. Otherwise, it's very complicated. Okay. Question number 17. Uh, What can be considered for our school to improve our hospitality... Oh, sorry, it's a question. What can be considered for our school to improve our hospitality for students increasing abroad? What can our school do to better accommodate international students whose number has been increasing recently? What kind of things can we talk about to accept the increasing number of better international students in recent years? What things would you say are important to our schools, enhancing welcome in the recently increasing international students? Oh god, that one got progressively worse. So one, um, what can be considered for our school to improve our hospitality for students increasing abroad? No, okay, I didn't get One is good until the end, because it's not your students studying abroad, it's abroad students coming to study in Japan. So you need to swap that around. 
Sentence number two. What can our school do to better accommodate international students has, whose number has been increasing recently? Uh, yes, makes perfect sense, but you need to say whose numbers. You need a plural on number. Whose numbers have been increasing recently. So not number has, but numbers have. What kind of things can we think about to accept the increasing number of better international students in recent years? Don't ever say that. Awful sentence. <laughs> so confusing, so complex. Better international students? That's saying, you know, these students have, are doing better at school. They're getting better grades, not more numbers. You just need to say more international students. And uh, number four. Oh, God. What kind, what things would you say are important to our schools enhancing welcome in the recently increasing international students? Uh, what things would you say are important for the school to increase, uh, increase the welcoming of, the welcoming of increasing numbers of international students? Man, Japanese entrance exams are so hard. <laughs> I do not pit, I do not envy you at all. Um, question number 18. Last question. Sentence number one. You should not use your cell phone in the hotel where other guests will not be annoyed. Double negative. You should not use your cell phone in the hotel where other guests will not be annoyed. You should. Got it. Please limit the use of mobile phones in this hotel to areas where it will not disturb other guests. When using a mobile phone in the hotel, please restrict its use to a place in a place that does not bother other guests. The cell phone is the cell phone use is just about allowed in certain parts of the hotel where other guests find it inconvenient. What? Okay, the, the one that makes sense, easy answer, sentence number one, no, sentence number two, please limit the use of mobile phones in this hotel to areas where it will not disturb other guests. Perfect, that's, that's all you need to say. Use your mobile phone in places where other guests aren't, basically. Uh, number one, it's very confusing. You should only use your cell phone in the hotel where other guests will not be annoyed. That makes sense. You should not use your cell phone in the hotel where the guests will not be annoyed. It says, please, by, by using sentence one as it is, it says, please use your mobile phone to annoy other guests, which you don't want to do. Um, question number three, or sorry, sentence number three. When using a mobile phone in the hotel, please restrict its use in a place that does not bother other guests. So it says, this one says, don't use your phone too much in places that do not bother other guests. Again, the opposite of what you're trying to say. And sentence number four, the cell phone use is just about allowed in certain parts of the hotel where other guests find it inconvenient. Oh, this one's a mess. This one is such a mess. Um, cell phone usage is allowed in certain parts of the hotel without other guests. Or where convenient for other guests. Something like that. That makes sense. Basically, it's just trying it's trying to say um, don't use your phone in places where other guests will find it inconvenient, but it's saying it the wrong way. Anyway, it's been 21 minutes, so I should probably wrap this video up. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope everything's going well where you are. I hope you're all staying safe and nothing's affecting you too badly. Um, thank you so much for over 20,000 views on my last video um, at the time of recording this. And I'll see you soon. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Take care.